Well, saints, come on in, come on in. Prepare your mind to receive a word from God, saints. We really look forward to expounding on the word of God with you today. And prayerfully, it's something that will be said that will be beneficial to you in this day and time in your life. Not just wasting time, saints. Really looking forward to getting into the word of God with you all. Prayerfully, prayerfully, something you are dealing with or going through this can give you an answer. Just to let you know. God knows exactly. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows all about it. has an answer for that which you're facing and dealing with. So, prepare yourself. Get yourself something to write with, saints. We got about, got about a minute. About a minute. So, get yourself something to write with. Prepare yourself um, to receive a word from God. Thank you for not just wasting your time, but coming with a spirit of expectation. We're going to be at Acts, guys. Acts. We're going to pick up in Acts where we left off. Acts, the 25th chapter. That's where we're at. That's what we're dealing with. distracted by who is and who is not here. This train is pulling out of the station. Choo choo guys, we're getting ready to pull out of here. So hold on. Call a friend, call a loved one, let them know this train pulling out. They can catch us down the street a little bit, but we're about to get on the express and get about God's business. So, with that said, let us go before the throne of grace in prayer, saints. With heads bowed, we say, Father, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for our health, life, and our strength. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and for all that you have done. We thank you for the doors, Lord God, that you have opened before us, Father. We thank you for the way that you have made for us. We thank you, Lord God, for how you have blessed us with health and in peace, with a sound mind, cheerful spirits, and the strength, Lord God, the strength to be able to do the things that you have called us to do. So I pray, Father, that you bless us right now, that our minds may stay right here in the moment that we may stay focused on what it is that you are saying, remove ourselves from the equation. Meaning, Lord, when the Spirit decides to take us one way, even if we don't understand it, let us just be ones that say, Amen. That means to follow what you have set before us, Lord, and not try to figure out your job. Our job is to obey you while you be God. Father, I pray that you bless the saints right now, that they have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says unto the church. I pray that they come with a spirit, Lord God, of expectation and wanting to see you, Lord, do a thing for them. Bless the saints, Lord, that they may have a ready mind to receive thy word, that we may grow together according to your will, Lord, word and your way. Help us all, Lord, to remove, Lord, what is taking place today. We may put that on the back burner, that the enemy may not slide in and steal something of value this moment from us, Lord. 
But let us get into your word. So with that said, by my own free will, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over the message that is about to be brought to thy people. Bless the saints, Lord, that they may stay focused in, that we all may be have ready to hear what you have to say and obey it. To those that are here right now, bless us in a moment. To those that will be joining us shortly, I pray, Father, that you bless them, protect them, and watch over them, that they may get to a safe place, that they may be able to hear thy word expound on, Lord. And to those that will not be here with us tonight, for whatever reason, I plead the blood of Jesus that you put in a yearning in their heart, Lord, to want to know more, to do more, to be able to expect expect your word, Lord, to do what it said, exactly what you said it would do. And if they would do that, Lord, we would be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now, this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in your name and under your blood. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, if you're in agreement with that prayer, saint, say amen. Okay, so here's the situation that we're dealing with. We're in Acts, the 25th chapter. And last week, guys, we was at, um, we ended at, well, we had covered about one, two, three, four, five, six. So six verses we had covered in Acts. And we're moving through the book of Acts. And we're Acts verse uh, chapter 25. And we had covered down from 6 to 11. So in our popular slingshot effect, we're going to go back. We're going to read those. And we're going to briefly touch on what was going down in those verses so we can then move to the new information that God has before us. But before we get started, let me say this. And I just want to take a few minutes to speak to you about something. Let me say thank you, guys. I really do appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule and being able to join us in Bible study on Wednesday nights. Now, this one thing I do know, saints, it's for your own good. But there are a large segment of saints that do not take the word of God very serious in that they believe that they need to have a portion of the word daily. And so what they do is to skip through it with all of the things that's going on in life. They are too busy to spend some time in the word of God. And it is not that they're too busy. Nine times out of ten, they do not take the word of God that serious. Because if you can sit on Facebook for hours, TikTok for hours, and doing whatever for hours, you surely can take 30 to 45 minutes to hear what the Lord has to say to you, for you, about you. So I want to say to each and every last one of you guys that join us uh, on Wednesday nights, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. For I can prepare the word all day. It doesn't matter how well a chef can cook. If there's no one to serve, if there's no one to serve, the food is wasted. So I want to say to you, thank you guys for taking time to come and eat at the restaurant that we call Firm Foundation and the chef, which is Pastor Minor. So I pray that something Pastor Minor has said is going to be beneficial to you. And what I want you to do is listen to what's being said and see how you can apply this to your life. And you say, how can I apply this to my life? This is something that happened over 2,000 years ago. Yeah, but the same God, um, the same devil that had the tricks that do what he does is battling in the same God that will bring you through. And if God brought them out, you can see how he will bring you out too. What we're looking at is when the numbers are insurmountable against Paul and the lies from people of high powerful positions that you cannot compete against on your own, what you will find out is when you get into the word of God and hold firm to God, God would then get you around these powerful people in their lies and their, their power and their deceit. So that's what we're looking at. Paul is trying to be, um, Paul is being accused by the religious people, the same ones that's supposed to be on his side are the ones that's telling people to uh, not hear him. As a matter of fact, he's a heretic to them. But you need to examine yourself. And when a person is speaking, see to align up with the word. I don't care what, what leader says. If someone is saying something that lines up with the word, I want this leader to explain to me, how is this wrong? And if you can't, am I to obey God or man? So getting into the word of God, we left off, guys, again last week in Acts, the 25th chapter, in verse number 6. Here's the account here. The word says, and when he had tarried there, and this is talking about Festus, um, coming down um, from Jerusalem to Caesarea, um, sitting there with the Jews or dealing with them, it says, And when he had tarried among them more than ten days, he went down unto Caesarea, and the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, commanded Paul to be brought. And when he was, and when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and lied many and grievous complaints against him which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended anything at all. 
But Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, With thy go up to Jerusalem, and there be judge of these things before me. Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews have I done no wrong, as thou well, as thou very well knowest. For if I be an offender or have committed and committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. And so what we had, guys, what you need to re recognize what was taking place, especially it's coming in, and he is looking at this situation. Now, uh, we learned earlier that the Jewish people was really in the uproar and upset, and that's what all of it, you're looking at a spiritual battle that is taking place where the natural people are trying to bring in natural uh, means to deal with a spiritual matter. The battle that they was dealing with was not natural at all. And we're going to see as we study through the word of God, it's not natural. It's spiritual. And many times we as believers try to fill um, spiritual things with natural things or spiritual holes with natural things. And it's never going to work. It's never, ever, ever going to work. So what we have to do is stay in the spiritual. So what you were looking at was a spiritual battle taking place. Paul stood according to God's word and with the depth of God's word with the Holy Ghost was explaining to the Jewish leaders or the Jewish people. Matter of fact, he wasn't really explaining to them. He was just talking to the Jews, the, the people, and was telling them about Jesus and explaining to them the law more perfectly and the Jewish leaders was the ones that got upset and was angry that Paul was proclaiming the word of God because religion holds people up under um, a thumb if you will in, in order to have religion you have to have a person that is in power and so many people are not willing to give up their power and so they will keep religion even if it have people bound but salvation says Jesus alone has the power. And so therefore, if Jesus has the power, he is free to set you free so wheresoever you may be. Some people feel like you can't pray in this place. You cannot, uh, you can't get saved in this place. There is no bounds to where God can save a person or where you can pray. But religious people tell you, you can't do that. You can't wear that in the church. Why? Why? God says, come as you are. But religion will hold people down and hold them bound, if you will. But God wants you to be free because the word says, he who the son set free is free indeed. And so that's what the battle that was taking place that Paul was going on. And so Festus coming, I'm going to say um, Phoenix coming into the situation. No, Festus coming into the situation. Now I'll show you why I get those two confused. Well, Festus coming into the situation. Um, was looking at this whole circumstance that was going on with Paul and the leaders and he was trying to figure this thing out and so he was asking Paul would he be willing to go down to Jerusalem to uh, go up to Jerusalem and deal with this matter and Paul was like no you know this took place right here in um, in the seat again um, verse number looking at verse number 8 if you will well, no, verse number nine, it says, but Paul, willing to, but Festus, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul and said, would thy go up to Jerusalem and there be judge of these things? Verse 10 is what I was looking for. Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment, judgment seat where I ought to be judged. So when he said, no, I'm right here where I should be in front of the Romans at Caesar's seat. This is where I should be judged. It shouldn't be some kangaroo court that they have up in Jerusalem that they want to um, put me in because that's where the Jewish leaders was from. And so they had a lot of power in that area. And what they wanted to do is to get Paul back up there so they can have the rigged court to be able to accuse him and kill him because they asked Felix that, um, they asked Festus that earlier. Could they, he send Paul to Jerusalem and we're going to kill him along the way. And Festus was like, no, I'm not going to do that. But he asked Paul, would you be willing to go up there? And then we're going to find out why Festus asked Paul that. Okay, so with that said, guys, we now move along to new, um, new information. So remember, last thing Paul says in verse number 11, he says, for if, I be, for if I be an offender and have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. So Paul is saying, if I've done something wrong and, and it calls for me the penalty, whatever the penalty is for what I have done wrong, I'm willing to take my responsibility.
That's what Paul is saying. He says, but if there be no, but if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me. So he said, if none of this stuff they have accused me of, if it have not been proven, because we know this back in verse number six, um, verse number seven, none of the stuff could be proven. They brought accusations against Paul. And the things could not be proven. So he's saying again, but if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto, unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. So Paul is saying, no, I have not done anything wrong. So no, I'm not going to that kangaroo court. And if you, Festus, are not willing to deal with the situation, I appeal to Caesar. So when he said those words, it now took the situation or the circumstance out of the hands of Festus. Remember, there's a hierarchy over them. So the Jewish leaders was coming and was speaking to the Roman people who had um, providence, who had, who had authority over that providence. And so they tried to get him to um, send Paul up to Ju um, Jerusalem where they were going to kill him along the way and we'll be done with the case altogether. But he was not willing to do with that because Paul was a dual citizen and Festus could not send a Roman to be killed unjustifiably. And so he asked him, would you do this? And Paul said, no. Right here, um, Caesar's judgment seat is where I ought to be judged and if you're not going to do it, I'm going to appeal to Caesar. Now we move into new information. He says in verse number 12, he says, then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, have thou appealed unto Caesar? Unto Caesar thou shalt go. And so what he is saying is Festus in verse number 12. Festus is saying, okay, are you exercising your right to take this up a level? Are you exercising your right to be heard in wrong or be heard in wrong by Caesar? Are you exercising that right? Because he had that option as a Roman citizen. And so Paul says, yes, that's the right I'm exercising. So Festus then says, well, to Caesar you will go. If that's what you're requesting, that's where you're going to go. So what we have to understand is you need to know what your rights are. The word of God tells you in all you're getting, get an understanding. Know what your rights are. Don't argue with certain people that don't have the authority to make the, make the decision. You don't do that, guys. It would be, um, I remember one time I was, um, there was a home, my wife, um, rental property we had. And um, there was a, a couple that stayed there. And there was someone, an intrusion into the house where they wanted to get an alarm system. And um, when they got it, they was thinking about they're going to move. They want to get an alarm system. Now, I said that to say this. The alarm system needed, where the guy told me, no, we need your permission to put alarm in your house. We can't do that. Even if you're renting it out, we need your permission. And so, because if something goes wrong, you know, we need to say we have the permission of the owner, not someone that's renting the place. And so I sat down and I asked the man, I was very clear. So this not, this does not mean I am obligated to this alarm. This means, you know, I'm just selling right. He said, yes, you know, he just went through it. But nevertheless, he lied. The guy moved out and they stuffed me with the bill. And I was explaining to the guy was when they called, the people called and I was explaining to them. Well, it was too late to explain to them because they were just the ones enforcing the law. See, I should have dealt with that up front before you get to the collector. All the collector's job is to do is to collect money. It is not his job to hear your case. That should have been done in the beginning. So the point that I'm saying here is you need to know who you're fighting against. Quit trying to fight a case with someone that don't have no authority. You cannot be saying, I'm trying to fix, have someone to help you out here when it's not their juris, jurisdiction. You need to know what authority and power you have, and you need to stand in that. And that's what Paul is saying. Um, I'm not going to deal with this situation. I'm not going to Jerusalem. I'm going to sit right here at Caesar's seat. And Festus, if you will not do it, then I appeal to Caesar. And Festus says, is that what you want to do? He says, yes. Well, okay, to Caesar, then you will go. So that's what he's saying. You want to exercise this right? You are allowed to. You are allowed to. And that's what that was taking place there. So he moves on and says, um, now, Felix is moving forward. And then verse number 13, it says, and after certain days, King Agrippa and Bernice came unto Caesarea to salute Festus. Now, what was taking place there? Well, Caesarea, that was a province, if you will. Remember, guys, I told you, Rome was expanding its empire. And what Rome wanted to do, it was taking, um, as it was taking land, they had what you even call today as ambassadors to that land. 
or if you will, um, um, a governor or an ambassador there, or a city and or stand, if you would, a representative for the United States of America. That's what an ambassador is. An ambassador to the United States, that's a, uh, an ambassador of the United States, is a representative of our nation. And so what you have with Rome, as they expanded province, they had people that was over those province, a governor, if you will. And so Felix had just taken that, um, Festus has just taken that job from Felix, meaning Felix's time was up. So Festus came in, Rome would rotate their people because you did not want the people to stay in that area too long because they could become corrupt because um, they got too well known with the people that was living there. And sometimes they can become so familiar with them, you forget what your job is. I love the people of Firm Foundation, but I am the pastor. And so many times I don't want to get so close to you that when it comes time to dealing with you, I won't do that. That's not my job. My job is to be the pastor. And the same thing I would say to parents, your job is not to be your child's friend. Your job is to be the parent. And sometimes the parent is the bad guy. And so what they did is Felix was leaving out. Festus was coming in. So King Agrippa and Bernice came and they wanted, it's almost like a new governor come in and he's being coronated or he's being sworn into his job and powerful people will come and, and show their support. It would be equivalent to this day and time if the president came to your um, city. Well, I assure you, if he came to your city, your city is in your state. And so if the president of the United States came into your city, the governor of your state, the mayor of your city, the city council, all of them would be there because they are showing us uh, what you have is a leader of power that has come into um, that area. So all of them will come into that um, situation to show their faces. And so that's what was taking place. Um, Agrippa and Bernice came to salute Felix, meaning to congratulate him um, of his, his promotion to being over that province. So that's what that was, okay? That's what was taking place to his appointment to the authority and job that Rome has for him. Remember, Rome had only two things Rome was demanded. One, peace. Two, taxes. That's all they want. Keep the peace by any means necessary. Collect the taxes. And so that's what they would do is put people in certain places because once you get to know people and you see things that are done wrong, your heart go to that person. But when you are constantly moving around, you're not i um, attaching yourself in any way to the people. So therefore, um, there's really not no emotional ties to them. And many nations would like to have that. They don't want those emotional ties because you then um, may find yourself so comfortable you slip in information that's um, very vital or important or um, confidential. You're slipping it to people that you have um, slipped up because you have gotten close with. And they may not be as close to you as you are to them which means they're taking it to other people of authority and power. So that's what was taking place of Bernice and, and the king Agrippa comes there to sit down with Felix and talk with him. And it says, and when he had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's case un, unto the king saying, there is a certain man left in bonds by Felix. So now it's something you need to focus in on it because way back in 24, Felix put Paul in prison and he did nothing wrong. Felix clearly understood that Paul was innocent. Those religious leaders was lying. With Festus, a new set of eyes have come on the scene and he quickly realized those religious people are lying. Paul is telling the truth, but Paul is still in prison or still in bonds, if you will. And it says here, you need to focus in on verse number 14. And when they had been there many days, now we don't know how many is many. But many is not going to be five days. So all of this time, Paul is still, if you will, incarcerated. Incarcerated. But see, this is exactly the point I was making. Festus declared, declares Paul's case unto the king. So if you're with somebody long enough, the things that's on your heart or on your mind, you're going to begin to talk to them about it. And so Festus was beginning to talk to King Agrippa about Paul's situation. And he told him, he said, I'm uh, saying, there is a certain man left in bonds by Felix. I had nothing to do with this. But when I came here into power, there was a person that was, uh, that slept in and um, bound by Felix. And he gave me the rundown on the case. And it's a very curious case. Now, what he is saying is he's bouncing it now off a of gripper. Just like you may have something that really does have your mind twisted and torn or you can't figure this thing out. 
So what you do is you start speaking with someone, um, a close friend, or if you will, me, if it's something that I'm really dealing with and can't go through. There are many, um, well, there's a very select group of pastors that I will speak with about situations because I keep things totally confidential when it comes to firm foundation. But if I run up on something that I'm not quite sure about I need, or I need better understanding on, there's a select group of pastors, my pastor, and then there's other pastors of well-known names that I can uh, have access to, that I can talk to and get their their guidance or counsel because they've been in this thing way longer than I have. And there are certain situations that they can help me out with. So that's what was taking place there with Felix. He was talking to King Agrippa and saying, listen, here's a situation that's, that's totally got me perplexed. He says, now, this is not mine. It was just, you know, when I came into the position, it was there. And so he was beginning to tell them about this situation. He says, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priest, now listen to this, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring, desiring to have judgment against him. Now, look at this. They knew that Felix was um, going to be the next person that's going to be in power at Caesarea. So they had gotten him before he even took power. They was already trying to influence his thinking about Paul while he was before he even took power. And that's what he was saying about whom I was I was at Jerusalem, about whom I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me. So they told me all, this whole situation about this man before I even got to, to Caesarea. They tried to change his thinking, persuade his thinking, if you will. And there are going to be people that's going to have a, um, a crack at people that may have some authority over you before they get to know you. Yeah, some people that's going to put a lie out on you before you even know they don't lie on you. So you may find out people you never in your life even seen before. They come in and they rolling their eyes and looking at you and you're like, well, I, I don't even know this person. That's because someone has already put in their minds a thought about you. And that's exactly what the, the chief priests and elders. Now, you notice they stress and is a conjunction, meaning not just the chief priests, but the leadership was in agreement with what was taking place. So the chief priests and the elders um, of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against them. So they was trying to do what? They was trying to have him to send him from Caesarea up to Jerusalem where we can kill him, the religious people. They want to murder him. And trust me, that's one thing about religion. Religion can always justify any sin you get into. A religion can always justify. That's why I say I don't preach religion. I preach salvation. Because salvation is going to hold the standard regardless of who it's looking at or regardless of where it is at. Salvation is going to hold the standard of truth regardless. But religion will make the adjustment for someone because religion is man. Salvation is God's. And that's why you have so many churches, they're so locked into religion, they're going to do a thing a certain way. And this is just the way they do it when God try to change it. They says, no, this is what we do. We always done it this way. And that's why you're in the same predicament you've always been in. Be willing to let God do what he does, guys. Do you not know that God already know the ones that's playing against you? God already knows what plans they have against you. So God is saying, you just trust me. Just trust me. Let me um, abide in the word and I I'll take care of you on this. And so they are already stacked the deck against um, Paul. And that's why Paul was saying what he said. No, I'm not going to Jerusalem. This didn't go down at Jerusalem. It happened right here and this is where I should be judged. And again, I say, know your right, saints. Know what it is that you have a right to do and exhaust all your means. And that's what the word means when it says, after you have done all you know to do to stand, stand, sit still, don't move. After you don't gave everything you can to God about this situation, let God do what God do. But please, whatever you do, don't keep taking it out of God's hand. God, you got to do something. Well, you ain't going to do it. I do it. Well, when you do it, you're responsible for the outcome. But when you let God do it, do it, God will get you out of it. Okay? And God is not going to go the way we're going to go. All God desires of us is that we spend time in prayer for God doing his work. And so that's what was taking place right there, guys. Um, again, in verse number 15, that's what he's saying. So, um, and so again, what um, Festus was saying is before I even 
um, received power, it, before I even got power in this area, the area that I'm going to, they are already trying to persuade me and change my mind towards where we're at. So this is what he says in verse number 16. It says, to whom, to whom I answered, is it not the manner of a, it is not the manner of a, it is not the manner of Rome to deliver any man to death, to die before that he, which is accused, have the accuser face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime lied against him. And so what he is, um, what Festus is saying here, Festus is um, informing um, King Agrippa. He's saying to him, listen, I told these people, this is what I told these, these religious leaders, these Jewish leaders. It is not the custom of Rome. There is a law that I am bound by. Where there is no laws, people make up their own laws. And when people make up their own laws, we all have the God complex. We're going to make up the law that's going to best benefit us. But when you stand according to God's law, God's law is a mirror to just show you what it is. You cannot take the mirror, you know, and, or you could, well, a, a straight mirror. Because they have some mirrors that will warp the, situ uh, warp the situation. You ever seen those mirrors you can stand in front of it and makes you real fat or makes you real, real tall or makes you wavery? These are mirrors that have been distorted. But a regular mirror, when you set it before you, the mirror shows you what it is. And the word of God, when it's distorted, can make people, and that's what religion does. Religion can get into the word and make the word say whatever they want it to say because they take it out of context. But when you read the word like it should be, what the word of God will do is open up and show you exactly who you are. And we as people, we have a God complex that what we want to do is make things and benefit towards us. God's going to make an adjustment for me. But everybody else, God brings down his wrath on. And so that's what he's saying. He says, uh, again, so Felix, um, they asked, this is what they asked Felix. And Felix is now telling, Festus is now telling um, King Agrippa. He says, to whom I answered. So I'm telling these Romans, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die. That's not what we do. He said, especially before that which was that which is accused have been um, have his accusers face to face. So you're gonna have to be able to face the people that's making this accusation against you. And we have already had that twice. Festus have seen it, and Felix have seen it. Seen what? The accusers come before Paul, and they had no grounds. That's what the word was saying back in verse number. I think it was verse number. Brought us. Um, it says, verse, yeah, verse number seven, way back in verse number seven. So <clears throat> when you look again, well, let's, let's stay there first at verse number 16. It says, to, to whom I answered, it is not the manner of Rome to deliver any man to die before that which he, that, that he which is accused, um, have the accusers face to face. So that's what he's saying. Rome's not going to do this. So go back to verse number, what was that, seven? And he says, and it says, and when he was come, the Jews which came down from Jerusalem stood round about and lied many grievous, lied many and grievous complaints against, against Paul, which they could not prove. So back to verse, um, back to where we at, verse number 16. So that's what he is saying. It is not Rome's way. We're going to have to let y'all guys be face to face. We're going to have to hear the situation and then we will make a judgment. And that's the only way you're going to be able to get an honest judgment. But there are certain places, jobs or churches or families, they will not deal with the situation because they don't want conflict. There's some people that's just too afraid to allow conflict to happen. But anytime you have two opposing sides, there's going to be conflict. If someone says um, this person stole something and someone said this person did not, you got to bring them people together and find out how do we have two op polar opposites and both of y'all was there looking at the same thing. Or a person said you stole something. He said, no, I didn't. Well, you need to go to that accuse, um, stand in front of that accuser and say, yes, you did. And it's as evidenced by this. This is why I know you stole this. And so they don't have that. And so that's what. Festus was telling Agrippa that he told the Roman, um, told the um, Jewish leaders. He said, um, facing them face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime 
um, lied against him. So this person need to be able to defend themselves. You can't come up with something and just let a person squirm in a wind and, and, and try to accuse them. This, that would be a equivalent to me taking you to court. And a judge have you in court and you're flipping all over your place, face all over yourself trying to defend yourself and you don't even know what I'm accusing you of. Can you please tell me what I'm accused of and then I can make my defense? But for me not to tell you what you're accused of and I hold that back from you and then say to the judge, okay, you can see he's guilty. Judge, I give you what? You haven't even told me what, he, what he's guilty of. And so that's what there's... Um, Festus is telling Agrippa that he told the Jewish leaders. That's what he's telling them, that you need to be able to understand Roman law. That's not what we do. Because if you did that, you would have chaos. People can it just come up to you and just make an accusation against you and say you're guilty. You are not guilty until proven innocent. You are innocent then proven guilty until proven guilty. And the um, if you would, guilt is on the, if you will, the accuser have to prove you are guilty. It's not that you got to prove you not. They have to prove you are. Imagine how crazy that would be. Somebody could just bring you in and make an accusation and you got to spend all your money trying to prove that's not true. Now that's a different thing when a person says, well, here is why this person, uh, I know they did it. Here is why. And they present evidence that you did this. Now you have to prove that evidence is, is wrong. But that's what is taking place there. So again, um, Festus is letting Agrippa know Agrippa what he has told the Roman soldiers. Why? But say what he has told the Jewish leaders. Why? Because I'm dealing with this Paul situation. This man is in my court. I'm going to say in jail. And I have to deal with this because it's going to bring a disturbance. And that's not what Caesar wanted, a disturbance in his province. It says, 17, therefore, when they were come hither without, a, without any delay on the morrow, I sat, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded, commanded the man to be brought forth. So he said the very next day when I got here to power, I didn't mess around. I immediately went to the place of authority and I called him in. Let's deal with this situation. He said, I understood um, everything that possibly could flare off because of this. Remember, he just came into power and I got to show the people that I am fair, but I also got to keep the peace. And so what he's saying is, I'm bringing this thing on um, immediately. Let's deal with it. Y'all ain't got to wait long. Let's get into it. Because the longer you wait for a thing, the more foggy people's minds become. And so that's what Phoenix is, um, is saying here. He's telling the gripper, you know, the next day I got right on it, man. I dealt with this thing, and so I got them both in a room together. And when I began to listen to the circumstances situation, he sounded like he made sense to me. He sounded like he made sense to me. So I was trying to say, okay, then, you know, are you willing to go to up to Jerusalem? And he said, no, I'm not. I'm going to appeal to Caesar. So I need to know how do you handle this situ situation and circumstance. It says, again, uh, I brought him forth, and in 18, he says, against whom, it says, against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought, no, they brought non accusations of such things, I suppose. He said, when I told these guys, okay, I got the accuser, accusers, and I got the accused in a room together, and I listened to the, to the, to what was taking place, and this, he says, the stuff y'all was talking about, that don't even make sense. That makes no sense. He says, against whom when the accuser stood up, so I gave you the chance, all accusers, stand up. He says, they brought non-accusations of such things as I suppose. They weren't even talking about what I was here for. What in the world are you guys talking about? And see, that's what happens when a person is full with lies and they can't stand up to the truth when you put them on the spot and everybody has eyes on them. They're going to talk about everything but what they should be talking about. Now, you guys made an accusation against this man. We need to hear. I need to hear from you guys. Why? And when the floor was there, y'all don't made all this noise. Y'all don't bother me up in um, y'all don't bother me up in Jerusalem. I don't got down here in Caesarea. Y'all, word is all out here. And now I'm giving you the opportunity to state your case. You have no case because you're going to everything but what you should be addressing. Anytime a person want to talk about anything but what the obvious is, that lets you know they don't have a case. 
But Paul said, uh, remember, Paul addressed the issue. He was willing to go right at it. And that's where he was pointing out in verse number um, in verse number, Paul said, okay, in verse number nine, he says, but Felix, willing to do the Jews a pleasure, Paul, um, um, willing to do the, Jew, do the Jews a pleasure, answered Paul, and Paul said, um, thou goest, uh, he asked, would thou go up to Jerusalem, and there be judge of these things? No, verse number eight is what I was looking for. And so they asked Paul. Paul got right to the crust of the matter. Paul said in verse number eight, he says, while he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews. So he's saying the Jewish laws, I haven't broken any of those. Neither against the temple, well, the temple laws, I haven't broke any of those. Nor yet against Caesar, nor the Roman laws, I haven't broken any of those. So he's saying, I haven't broke any of these. They want to go off on a tangent to everything else. They won't answer the question. The question was, have you broken any Jewish law? No. Have you broken any temple law? No. Have you broken any Roman law? No. So that should be the crust of the matter. This case should be closed. So what you have is you're looking at this situation. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. And that's why um, Festus began to, uh, began to look at this situation and answer the question. He says, again, whom, whom verse number 18, he says, against whom? When the accusers stood up, they brought none accusations of such things as I suppose. They did not even touch the subject. They did not even deal with the situation at hand. Guys, all God asks you to do is to stand up. All God asks you to do is to stand firm. All God wants you to do is just honor his word. Don't you worry about the lies that they tell. You can't do anything about their lies anyway. There's nothing you can do against the truth, only for the truth. So when you stand in truth, which is God's word, you will find out that God will deliver you and bring you through. But all oh, saints, when you try to find yourself um, trying to answer a lie, the moment you get that lie pretty much put down, they're going to jump to another lie. They're going to jump to another lie. They're going to have you bouncing all over the place. You need to stay focused on God's word. You need to stay focused on the truth. Just state what the matter is. Everybody around sees who the liar is. Everybody around sees shady. They know what it looks like. But you need to trust God and believe God every step of the way. We thank you for the time that we have had thus far in the studying of God's word. And we'll pick up next week where we left off in verse number, uh, verse number 18. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the time that we have had in your word that we are able to study and get an understanding. I pray, Father, that your saints have an ear to hear what the Spirit says unto the church and honor your word. Do not let your word slip past them, Lord. Help us to hold firm to what you have set before us that we may apply it to our lives, understanding that what's at stake is our spiritual growth. Oh, if the enemy can ever get us to be weary in our well-doing, that we quit, he knows he wins. But as long as we continue fighting and going forward, Lord, you will forever bless us. You will forever bring us through. You will forever deliver us. Oh, Father, I pray. Do not let your word go wasted in our lives. Let us to take it and apply it to our lives that we may be able to grow in, through, and by your word. Thank you, Father, for the time we have had in your word today. Help us to hold on to your word deep in our hearts that we may grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me ask the question. Is there anyone out here who do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior? I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. If you're one that do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and the message tonight has touched your heart and you want to give your life to Christ, I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Now, um, before we move, let me ask, is there someone out here who once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you turned and walked away and you now want to rededicate your life to Christ? Come and walk with me with the person that never knew the Lord. And let's get this thing right. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that you have set before me. I right now, by my own free will, choose to walk through this door of repentance. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. Help me, Lord, that I may walk upright for you from this point on. So, Lord, I right now, of my own free will, confess Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. 
I choose to live my life after your will, your law, your way. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. If you will put that in the comment section, we will rejoice with you. Now, you ask the question, what do I do now that I've given my life to Christ and saved? Well, what you'll do is you get into a good Bible-believing church, sit down up under the Word, and grow. Now, you may say, well, I'm not sure about what's right or what's wrong. This is new to me. Well, stay right here with us and continue growing in the Word. And as you grow, that you can go, we'll give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now, you will say, well, I like this ministry. I would like to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South. Kernersville, North Carolina. You can Google us between Kernersville and High Point on 66. If you're getting off either of the 40s, you know, going past the new 40 or 40 bypass, about a half a mile on your left-hand side, you'll find Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry. If you're coming from High Point, right about a half a mile before you get to the um, new 40, right there on your right-hand side, you'll find Firm Foundation. We would love to spend time with you in the Word, um, meet you face-to-face, -face, give you a handshake, a hug, you know. You may say, well, okay, I want to support the ministry. How can I support the ministry? Well, you can go to our website right here where you're at. There's a QR code, firmfoundationoutreach.org. Um, There's a QR code where you can give, and everything will be used for the kingdom of God's purpose. No shady business at all. Saints, we thank God for you. We bless God for the time that we have had together in the Word, and we look forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel. Um, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. You be blessed. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus, who is the Christ.